Hello and welcome. My name is Richard Haidt and today I'd like to talk to you about dreams and as they relate to the spiritual awakening path. There's a lot of there's a lot of dimension, uh, a lot of depth to dreams and the relationship between dreams and the spiritual awakening path. This is probably something that that I could talk about for hours uh, but but for now i want to give you some basic guidelines as to one aspect of dream or one type of dream as it relates to the spiritual awakening path and that is what i describe as visionary dreams so there are many ways in which we may have visions uh, some of these are just sudden visions while we are awake Others may occur during dream state. And how do we know that when we're having those dreams, how do we parse those dreams out from the more common or regular type dreams which we, ha we may have? Uh, because parsing them out will be very helpful in um, paying special attention when the spiritual dream uh, comes, when uh, sorry, a visionary dream occurs. What I mean by a visionary dream is a dream that may give you important life direction or important life information that pertains to your awakening path specifically, uh, or your mission in your life, or a communication uh, with regards to with regards to the life process. Uh, that can include the death process. Now, typically people instinctively recognize what these dreams are because they just feel so incredibly meaningful. They feel so deep. Even if the content didn't appear to be so deep, there's a, there's a deep, deep impact or feeling of depth in the dream. That's essential. Now, normal dreams for most people are gonna be black and white. Um, they may lack other senses, they may have sound, but, but lack other senses. There may be no sense of smell or taste or uh, that sort of thing. And those dreams uh, are going to have less depth of content. And then there are dreams that have um, more depth, uh, they may be vivid, they may have vivid colors, they may have sounds, they may have, include smell or other senses as well as, uh, as visual. It doesn't necessarily mean they are visionary dreams. The difference between a visionary dream and, and those other dreams is there is a sudden, uh, there is a extra dimensionality to it which I can't describe much more than that. It's an extra dimensionality. And that extra dimensionality really is, at least in part, uh, felt as deep meaning. And I've had a number of these dreams uh, and they can be just as profound and life-changing as uh, an awakening, a, a, awakened, a, a vision during awakened state. Um, so I don't necessarily, I don't rank order a vision as it is, occurs during sleep or a vision that occurs during waking hours, a vision that occurs during meditation or a vision that occurs during psychedelics, during, while taking psychedelics. I don't rank order any of these. All that matters is the depth and the value of the information. And then of course, what you actually end up doing with that information. The reason I'm talking about this right now is because sometimes we can we can have a vision and then we, we may tell this to people and other people may poo-poo it or our logical mind maybe poo-poos it we ourselves quote unquote poo-poo it and think ah it was only a dream and in the process of doing so 
of course, we are unable to follow through on the direction of, of that vision. I suspect if you were to look deeper down, because the, the sense of meaning is so deep in these dreams, if you were to really investigate the motivation behind the poo-pooing, um, it's, it's beyond just the reason or logic that's poo-pooing it. There, underneath that, I suspect, there is a desire not to have to take the responsibility and the desire not to take the leap of faith. And the logic is just sort of an insulation. It's, it's the excuse not to take the responsibility or to take the leap of faith. One of the facets, and one of the reasons I'm talking about this right now, I just a few videos, videos ago, I just talked about, um, I just warned about not wanting visions, and I'm not suggesting that you would want them, because to, to want a vision without wanting to take the responsibility and taking the follow through is extraordinarily selfish. Basically, you're seeking entertainment. Oftentimes, I find people that have visions brag about those visions. I did that in the past when I was young. Um, it's, it's an egoic thing. It's, it's the idea that you get some sort of extra credit spiritual points for, for having a vision. There is no, there, you don't get any extra credit. You don't get any extra credit for going to yoga every day. You don't get any extra credit for how many asanas you can do, for how many prayers you can make. You don't get extra credit for wearing a crystal or a tie-dyed shirt. You don't get an extra credit for speaking really slowly. You don't get any extra credit for gazing in a strange way or having a long beard. None of that and all that stuff is nothing. It's just more mental noise. The true spiritual path is dynamic and it is so inspiring that responsibility comes naturally, assuming that we're willing to take that step. Initially, the vision will be shocking, possibly. It will require a change of paradigm, or the way we see the world in ourselves, possibly. But during that stage, it will be willful. It can't be helped. Once that change of paradigm occurs, willfulness goes away. Essentially, what we're talking about is once we stop caring what other people think of us um, and conforming our life towards um, fitting in or appearing normal, um, once we stop worrying about that, then, then we can take responsibility because we're not held back by other people's opinions of us. One of the most liberating things you can do is to do what is right, what you know deep down to be right, to be deeply authentic without caring about people's opinions of you. That doesn't mean you just do what you want. It means you do what feels deeply right, authentic not based on what you read somewhere, not based on what people told you or any of that, but what is truly from the deepest place within. And that is the spiritual awakening path. It's terrifying because now we have to, there are no experts anymore. We can't just defer to people. We could, but that would be inauthentic. So we may listen to experts. We may have teachers, but we still do our homework. We still investigate that information. The same way with visions. Take responsibility. We do our homework. We investigate. We follow through and we discover. We, we dive down and drill into those visionary um, experiences to really get the deepest understanding of what they mean because these visionary dreams or visions have many layers of meanings and you will only understand those deepening layers of meaning or get any insight into those deep deepening layers of meaning through the exploration, which means through the employment in your life, through manifesting those visions into the world, through taking responsibility. So anyway, going back to the dream state, many of you, many of you may have had visions during your life but hadn't realized it. I suspect at the time when you had the vision, you did feel the deep meaning. You may not remember it now, or you may not have remembered. You, your mind may have poof pooed it. Um, but hopefully this vision will remind you, or sorry, hopefully this video will remind you 
of such dreams or visionary experiences. And in the in soul being reminded, uh, it is my hope that you can open up to those experiences, to the memories of those dreams, and begin peeling away the layers of meaning through expression into the world, through taking responsibility, through doing the research. Um, so here's an example of a visionary dream that's actually very, very simple. My, my wife, uh, her mother had passed away. And a few days after her mother passed away, I, I got up to go working in Japan. I got up early as usual to go to school. She's normally up about up and about doing things at this time. And as I was going out the door, I noticed that she'd gone back into the bedroom and had laid down. So I looked in and said, are you all right? She said, I don't know. I just suddenly feel very sleepy. I'm okay. And uh, so anyway, I went about my day. And then about 10 o'clock in the morning, um, she called me. She called the school to talk to me. So I picked up the phone. And she said, she said, uh, you've talked to me about have about visionary dreams. Uh, how do you know the difference between a visionary dream and a regular dream? And uh, I said, well, do you think you had a visionary dream? She said, I'm not sure, but I just had a dream that just reminded me of something that you had said. And so I wanted to check with you. I said, well, okay, so a visionary dream is going to be rich in all of the senses, but it's going to have an extra dimensionality to it, a deep meaningfulness to it. And then she said, well, I think maybe I had a visionary dream. And uh, so in the dream, my mother came to me and, and we were talking. And oh, I, I also mentioned that if it's a, a visionary dream wherein we're speaking with someone who had passed, uh, that person is likely to come to us at a um, at a younger age, typically around thirty years old. So kind of they're in their prime, healthy, mature state. They're fully matured, but healthiest state. That's usually the the way in which they will be seen in the, in the visionary state. She says, "Oh, my, my mother came to me, and we were talking, and then." Suddenly in the dream, I touched her hand. And it, before I touched her hand, it was all black and white. But since I touched her hand, it became full vision and I could feel her hand in my hand. I could feel the warmth and there was this deep meaning. And she said, in the dream, uh, I will, I will mata dete kuriyo, which means I will come, I will come again. Now, of course, does that mean she's going to reincarnate? Does that mean she's going to come again in a dream? And that, that point, Tereko didn't, my wife, sorry, didn't know. And then my wife had asked her, why doesn't dad come to me in dream? And she said, oh, your father is around you all the time. You just can't see him. And, uh, and that was pretty much the dream. The important point about that dream was you know, when, when you have, when you suffer, when a family member passes away, someone close, a friend or whatever passes away, you're going through a, a deep mourning process and a depression. And part of that depression is um, the feeling that of course you're never going to see them again or the not sure um, if, if there is an afterlife or not. Uh, and if there is, are they in a good place or not? You know, there's a number of elements to these, uh, to to the mourning process. And of course, then of course, facing the reality that we're never certain um, of tomorrow for ourselves or anybody we love. But this dream had completely dispelled all of that um, process. It just her mourning process was over. She was suddenly very alleviated um, and felt clear and positive. And the idea that her mother passed away was not a bad thing at all anymore. It was actually refreshing for her because she felt her mother was in a, a good place. And then her perspective towards death completely changed. Now, 
a logical mind could jump in and say, yes, but you don't know. You don't really know. That could have just been a dream. And that's all true. But that doesn't change the fact that her perspective changed. And so that's a visionary dream that came in, in a healing way um, and, and allowed her to move through the death of her mother in a, in a very clear and open and fresh space. And then the subsequent death um, of other the people around her, of course, um, she was a little bit better able to deal with. Um, so that's just one aspect. Now, of course, I mentioned in, in a previous video the visionary dream that I had when I was a child. Um, that was one that was life directing. So a visionary dream can can be a sort of spiritual healing, um, or give us some deep insight into our lives, or give us some sort of um, life direction. The number of things that which it can do. They're not all, um, like in, in, in my wife's case, it didn't take some deep responsibility, that visionary, vision that occurred, didn't um, affect her on that level where there had to be some deep responsibility taken. Many dreams, the type of dreams that many people think they, I'm sorry, many visions, the type of people, types of visions that many people think they're looking for, which are these visionary, mission-based, you know, um, Messiah, what do you call it, uh, not messiah, um, messianic dreams, where one is shown that they have a, some spiritual purpose, um, a le spiritual leadership purpose in this in this uh, life. Uh, many people think that they want that, but uh, again, that takes a tremendous responsibility. So don't be so sure you want that, unless you're willing to take the responsibility. And if you are willing to take the responsibility, what that really means is you already are taking responsibility in your life. It means you are doing the things that you know are right. And you're not you're not um, shirking responsibilities or your duties. And you, you're do, taking care of your um, your life in a way that not only is taking care of responsibility, but you're doing it in a way that is that is lighthearted um, and it isn't based on inspiration. And if that's not what is occurring, then maybe, just maybe, you're not quite ready for a, a true mess messianic type vision. If you want one, get ready for it. Change your attitude. Take in the responsibility. Taking it in small things. Cleaning up your life. Taking care of things right now not putting things off. And you build on those small things and you build up to larger and ever larger things. No more excuses. Follow through. No bragging about it. You follow through because of inspiration. So that's just a little bit on um, visionary dreams, messianic dreams, visions in general. And uh, I hope it is of some use to you. Uh, these dreams can be really amazing and can be extremely helpful. You want them? Start taking care of your life and the lives of other people around you. It's great talking to you. Take care. Uh, as always, uh, please click, uh, what is it? You click there, like, and uh, you maybe, maybe, uh, when you register or whatever it is you do on, on uh, YouTube, there's something that you can press and give us a share. Uh, and uh, have a wonderful, uh, wonderful day. Bye-bye.